Hi, Moloeli. Ni mshani. Mta tupunte tange subtitling. Um, and I'm speaking about subtitling because I want to speak about Indoye protection of indigenous languages in South Africa. So I'm going to give it context through Isho Iri Housewives of Durban, the first season. Nala incident ga ayanda nguani where she was being accused of being tribalistic as a Zulu person, right? So, since so, Okumbula was the last episode, the yeah, Real Housewives of Durban, season one, I had a man who knows, no put like a poop, oh, ne, show me like a oh, umge, like, oh, like, tug. They were in Ayanda's room. And uh, I got here, Thomas, I love the uh, Real Housewives of Durban. I love the Real Housewives of Durban because, like, I find my real, real housewife show, like, it's not, Overly catty, I will leave one jalo. Um, in endo yoba, yobu kumba ya, you know. <laughs> so I really like that about it. And even na wuma mama kona, you know, ba, ba ne mali, but you know, they don't, they don't feel like they're always flaunting their wealth. So wuma ni man just to see them, like, like also Risha, for example, like you, you even forget that she's rich until you start seeing Bentleys and stuff, and you're like, she's got money, ba ne mali, 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 la ba 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 ba. So. Yeah, so I like. No, I really love the show. So and I really like. Ooh, I like. You know, no, 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 I like them as. Suppose they're all nice. Wait, Gula show. Wait, so you know, it's a really nice show. Anyway, I digress. So Gula episode of Kuben. I understand one. You know, no poopo, no lacho, no. But I remember the I understand right. And then uh, I had chat out with him. Uh, and then oh, oh, I understand says about who was the other cast member says, but I have no mood. Oh, um, so I. And then the subtitles write, Bana, she is not black, she is Tswana. And of course, we don't get on the leo. If we are going to storm, we are social media, but we are social media. Bana, see, so we are just up on on echo chamber with drama. Because we are seeing why we can't think logically. But we are not negative. It's quite a person who is not negative. So we are not going to be why we will bash people. So, and there's no logic to it. There's literally no logic, logic to it, DJ. It's just, you lose a hand handpacking. You lose a handpacking in the alcohol. So, I'm going to get it like, no, I'm a Zulu, Zulu, Gamalante, like, I understand all of them, the Zulu people, they, they think they're so much better than everybody else. They think they're the only human beings in the world. They think everybody else is an animal. Ah, they think they're so much better, you know? Uh, these are the people who are, you know, who are angry about them, look at Ayan. And then, and the people uh, who are Zulu understand what, what the type of Zulu that she was speaking or the context of the Zulu that she was speaking. But no, man, no, I understand that is not uh, Zulu. She is Twana. Because I'm a Zulu, sometimes in KZN, when they, they use the Elutu Umundo as a synonym for Zulu person, not that man is a synonym for a person in general. So, um, as explaining a lot of people, and then other Zulu people also explain it that way. Then, you know, there's newspapers, but the newspapers and the news companies and news agencies all over South Africa. In the Abbas, when I go Twitter, which so can go by Tati Lunda, by Lekka, by our multi choice, by our by guys, me to me, or I didn't live. A pen, we have a multi choice, he lives like a statement. And they're like, no, multi choice, um, or through Nom Sapiliso, who is the channel director for local entertainment. And then article not so nom sapiliso ni amputa. As a streaming platform, Showmax does not endorse any actions or comments made on any of the content available, be it reality TV or fictional series and movies or documentaries. We believe good content should encourage debate and discussion on key issues in our society. As a company, Showmax believes South Africa belongs to all who live in it. And we reject any form of discrimination. So I am like, I I watched the, the, the episode when it came across as like I said, it's a part of the real house of the of Durban. And like I literally I put on twelve, you put on twelve, I'm place go I so get so good. So uh like I'm not a native is is Zulu speaker. I, I speak in Zulu, but I'm not, you know, I don't speak it as a native mother tongue Zulu speaker. So I, I didn't know, but uh, is it what what her explanation? I under is it a real like is it true that they said how you yes yes protect all of your son because protect our logo and you've got fire breathing down your neck. So so I asked some of my Zulu native Zulu speakers, you know, but nobody Zulu Zulu proper. 
uh, bubbles my okay if, what does this mean like uh, does she really mean that like yeah, so when salon is as, as a synonym for a Zulu person and like yeah that actually that's what we we do do it's it's just it's it's the nature of the way that we are all just one of my of the people that i asked was like no it's because like you know a lot of times with Fumana Zulu, they've only ever been in KZN. So for them, the frame of reference is always a Zulu person first and then So it's, it's, it's a thing that we use. It's a phrase that we use in, 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 in synonym of, um, of a Zulu person. So because, like I said, I love the show. So when I was watching the show, you know, uh, that particular scene, I was particularly invested in it because you know, I was like, hey, 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 so, and I remember like, this particular scene coming up, and then um, I tell you, I understood, you know, and 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 then I was listening to her words, and then I was reading the subtitles, and I was just like, something is not making sense. Well, right? So, um, and then so in the subtitles, it is said in the subtitles. Um, and she is not black. And then what do you mean, Ayanda? And then Ayanda, with subtitles, Utua Utin. Or Abuz like Kongbana, what is she? Kuchi subtitles. Atu Ayanda in the subtitles, is she black? And then Ula Kongabuz, Atuana is not black. And then Apendulu Ayanda in the subtitles, Utua, when you get to a Zulu speaking person, you refer to them as a black person. So, ulondo ke ngokuba nalanto yabana o ayanda uthi yena. Eh basically is ayanda ngcwane is relegating or reducing any other person who is not Zulu to an animal and um only Zulu people are people to be taken seriously, right? So when I went to a research lab when I did the research for the video I realized that hey, e multi choice had actually used to quietly change the subtitles um between the time that that show was aired and the and the backlash came out and the time that it um i think it was a week later or two weeks later before in the island before the the um the reunion so they changed the subtitles without it what mean anybody without a statement like the the, the previous statement they they copied it um now the way that in the new subtitling ayanda's words are translated to reflect an understanding by ayanda that when she said she meant that Ukhomoto is not Zulu, um, but is of another tribe, which is the Tswana tribe, right? So, and now when I was when I was reading the situation, what I saw was the fact that um, subtitle whoever was doing the subtitles listened to what I was asking when I was going to say, 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 I was and then decided on Bana and I was saying Bana they are not human beings, not people, not black, whatever. Whereas Ula Tongo in my is that Ula Tongo and myself, she grew up in Johannesburg. So she might not have known uh, or had the context. I don't know, you we translate that she didn't have the dictionary, the contextual dictionary. Your translator had to be Ayanda because Yena she didn't grow up with that kind of Zulu value. So but for me it's there a pass bear aside to Gala Tongo. But for me, what's 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 worrying and what's um, what's glaring is the fact that a person who was doing the subtitles was not did not have the language capacity or the linguistic skills to understand needed to be translated contextually, not necessarily verbatim. I don't want to make it seem as if there are many other shows. I'm sure you've also watched the show where you sit there and you're watching the show and the subtitles come up and you're just like, Ayin, what is this? It's definitely not what this person has said, you know. So this issue of subtitling um, is, is a, is a per pervasive issue that, that goes on. I know even go Netflix where the people write letters, have written to the letters to Netflix complaining about what, 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 what are you guys doing? What, what's happening? What, what is this subtitling, you know? Um, so, but for, for me, I think it raised the important issue and the important conversation that we should be having about the protection of indigenous languages in South Africa and the role that in mainstream media 
um, and the government uh, should be playing in the efforts for protection. So the importance of subtitling. So you and I know by now subtitling will help us, you know, because I show like mm, I've grown up with, 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 with Vendor people, like I've had friends who are Vendor. Um, but I've never learned how to speak with Vendor because I just find it so difficult. I I, I no, they are me, yeah, shit, Saketa. Every time I have to learn the Vendor, but it's, 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 it's fail, fail, no, error, error. Every time I try to learn this Vendor. So I, wa I watched this for years when I was younger. But till today, a Vendor, I do not know. But I was able to watch that show because of the subtitles. So we all know Banangi subtitles help us to understand what the show is about, what the people are saying, help us, you know, keep, you know, prod along with the storyline, where to figure up how the wherever the directors want to take us or the story people want to take us with the storyline, because we've got the subtitles to help us. Um, but there are other subtle things that e e e subtitling help us with that we might not be aware of. So in 2014, 2004, so I'll put down all these links of these papers and the things that I watched in order to create this video. But in the paper, Kruger in 2004, she, I don't know if it's a he or, the, or she actually, but Kruger says that there are three things that e subtitling help, uh, helps us with beyond Leo, but it's, uh, it's translating television. The first of all, it helps us to raise the standards of literacy. So, abanaba umtukai literate, you know, by by umano funde za zindu papa just by you you know all these subtitles that are written, it's written there. You you learn, you learn to read, and you learn, you know, literacy. Um, and then SB me is improved second language acquisition. So, um, go funo funda another language. Umuzi go funo funda is if abanu funo funda is tohana or whatever. Okay, it failed for me with this friend, but I mean. I think I've learned some other languages through subtitling. Um, and I suppose the English, because when you, when you read the subtitles and you're listening, you're probably going to pick up English much quicker if you're not, you're not a native English speaker. And then the third thing is that language um, e e e subtitling helps with the language rights of marginalized groups, including previously politically marginalized groups. So politically ma marginalized in the South African context, obviously, is Teta. Right? Or who's not Afrikaans. Uh, so if it's not Afrikaans, it's not English. All of it. Um, so, and, and, and Khoi and, and all the other derivatives of, of, of Khoi languages. Um, so, yeah, so and contrary, to, contrary to popular belief, Nancy Zulu actually falls, it falls into a marginalized group. So those are the three things that um, subtitling helps us with, right? And then in terms of e e technicalities of subtitling, let's talk about the technicalities of subtitling. So who call it transcribing? And then we call it subtitling. So now when I, when I, before I, I did the research for this video, I actually thought about the transcribing and the subtitling are basically the same thing. But it's actually not technically different, it's two technically different skills or, or, or processes. Ne? So it's, a, it's transcribing is the thing where um, they are theta and they're like, I am mara 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 And then they go, um, yeah, I figure, I'm not like, I am mara 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 so it's subtitling, it should be like we, we're transcribing because it's subtitling is about context. So it's subtitling says, by now, I am what about You don't go and you write, I am what about as you would if you were writing a translation. But instead, you go and you write, you give the, 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 the contextual meaning, and then they so speed like lando ga yana ke ngo jobo ayenda ethe yena no anding ukhomotsa ka ngo umuntu ungumtswana then it means bana you don't go and write bana i understand ukhomotso is not a person is, is she is tswana no you go and give it context bana no in this particular context in this conversation lengoxa banayo right now xa esithi ukhomotso ka ngo umuntu 
it means bana ukhomuto is not zulu and that takes understanding um you know technical the technical skill sets of subtitling you need to have that and it needs you to understand the language quite deeply in order to understand those contextual things. And a problem I understand is that if somebody says something like that, surely you can just go and ask the person, but what did you mean by this, right? So, and then like in my research when I was looking, I was looking, but now, so I just wanted to get a sense of but I learned the subtitling. So um, I found in, in an article uh, by, uh, by Screen Africa, the Kate Mshe from Title Bid, who's the operations director. And then, okay, to check I describe the subtitling. Oti, the subtitling is not transcription, especially with new clients. They often expect to see a word-for-word -word translation on the screen, but that actually defeats the whole purpose of subtitling because it becomes distracting for the viewer. You still want them to watch the story, not read the screen. This problem is then made worse in the case of viewers who are hard of hearing. It becomes impossible for them to engage with anything else that is happening on screen. So we'll try to okay to share. And then we'll then so so like I have explained that okay to share has said, but it's about context of the subtitling, right? So then I wanted to understand, okay, what's the workflow here yeah, subtitling in order for them to explain the security in our, uh, 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 on our cultures waiting to be Twitter warriors? Um, what happens before we see that subtitle, right? And then um, another colleague, who's the managing director at Title Did, said the workflow is that we watch the show first to make sure we are familiar with the story and the context of what is being said. Then we subtitle line by line. And once we finish, we always make sure to do a last watch, checking every word we've put on screen. In the film industry, you're only good as good as your last job. And so quality control is really important to us. And then I read something else, your mirror say food deconnect. Uh, who's a staff reporter? I don't know if it was a male or a female, but the person says, "You work flowy, Akini. I'm baganja, right?" On a Monday, I receive the block of episodes. I'll be subtitling. It takes me about two to three hours to subtitle and translate, and then I send them off to the language advisor. She will make corrections in terms of the grammar, and then she sends it back to me for Im to implement the corrections. On Tuesday, I'll spend the day making my corrections and on the Wednesday we do a preview of the episodes with the channel by the time it's seen on TV many eyes have checked it thoroughly so what do I get by the time I see born but means a man who have seen this thing right so it hasn't just been one person who's a subtitler you know it's a workflow what do I do in land then goes back to this one and then it goes out as a finished product so somebody should have been able to pick this up. And I think for me then, the fact that nobody picked up but there was something wrong with the subtitling speaks to, you know, what, what kind of skills do we have in South Africa to actually um, um, subtitle, you know? And um, what, 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 what are the necessary requirements for, uh, for, for, for being a subtitler? And you know, when I was Googling and, and searching, of course, I'm, not, I'm no expert in these things, but what I got a sense from uh, off is the fact that in order for it for to be a subtitler, you do need, there are no degrees for subtitling in South Africa, first of all. There's no particular sub degree that says a degree a, a MA or BA or whatever in subtitling, no. But a lot of people tend to have degrees in the languages or linguistics in public universities. Um, and then there's um, short courses from non-state institutions. And then, um, but when I checked on LinkedIn, looking at people who worked as subtitlers or who are working as subtitlers right now, I found that a lot of them, okay, there were not a lot of, there weren't a lot of people who were in linguistics or had linguistics degrees or linguistics background or language background. But I saw people with degrees in Bachelor of Science, in Media Studies, in Electrical Engineering, in Social Work. So yeah, so that's the kind of uh, mix of people who actually work in subtitling in South Africa. And I think for, I suppose that's a, that's a whole other thing in terms of what kind of, te of, of technical skills do people have. But I think for me, it says, but now what are the channels, um, are the channels taking, res are, are, they, are, they, are they responsible, or are, are, they, are they taking it seriously, their, 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 um, their mandate 
to actually protect indigenous languages in, in, in South Africa. And when we talk about their mandate, we talk about the constitutional mandate that they have, um, or the constitutional responsibility that they have to protect our indigenous languages. So we see that in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, it says that the, the, um, the Constitution mandates Parliament to establish an independent regulatory institution which is required to provide for the regulation of broadcasting in the public interest and to ensure fairness and diversity of views broadly representing South African society. And that's section 192 of the Constitution. And from that, then we, we, we have the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, which is ICASA. And then we also have um, the Broadcasting Act of 1999, which says that commercial services must strive to be of high quality in all languages served. And then Gumekwe Department of, of Communications, which has outcome 14 that contemplates that sharing of common space across race and class will be enabled through instituting community dialogues this will promote this will be promoted by the narrative that facilitates healing social cohesion nation building dialogue and trust so when we look at the at, at first of all uh, it, when we look at the high quality that is, is is expected through the broadcasting act of 1999 i don't know if we can say about high quality but they couldn't translate contextually well it obviously didn't breed, breed any kind of social cohesion any healing any nation building um, the fair dialogue, and if anything, it just um, fed into any kinds of divisions that were underlying already, and of course, were then the cesspool that is Twitter. And then, so then we look at, at multi choice, and multi choice is governed by the Constitution and all the regulatory frameworks that emanate from the Constitution and are relevant to multi choice. And when we look at the, uh, the, the annual report in 2019, we see multi choice says that it makes significant investments in high quality local productions to cater for indigenous languages and preferences. And it says that it has um, an international platform that includes language learning as well as technical and soft skills training courses open to all employees. And then um, it says that their significant investment in local content sets them apart from international competitors, especially as African viewers love content in their own languages and stories that resonate culturally. So the, the example was with, the, with multi choice, but like I said before, you know, you watch even in Zimbabwe, I said you see, and you see, but uh, even their subtitling is a bit weird, is weird if it is an understatement. But anyway, so the point is that it's not just multi choice; it's also other, 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 um, you know, broadcasters. And when we look at SABC's language policy, they say in say in their aims and, and objectives that the SABC's primary role is to make its content accessible to all its audiences. In this regard, language is fundamental to meaningful communication. In line with this, the SABC aims to inform, educate, and entertain South Africans in their home or preferred languages. It aims to promote understanding and acceptance of and between the linguistic and cultural groups in South Africa. It aims to contribute to continual development of the official languages and the South African Sign Language and it aims to promote multilingualism in South Africa. The SABC's language usage, uh, usage in content services should therefore avoid giving offense and causing hurt unnecessarily. Like I said, of course, in this context that I'm talking about with, uh, with Ayanda's context, this is not an SABC issue, but we, we can apply you know, the issues and the, and, and, and the, and the observations that, that are made of the issue as Ayanda and the multi-choice to the SABC because they also have these issues, the subtitling. And all of this speaks directly to how, how indigenous languages in South Africa are not protected um, and they are not, uh, they are not preserved. And there, there seems to be a, a, a lack of will from many parties, both state, media, and just the general public in order, uh, in terms of making sure that these, these languages are preserved. In an opinion piece, written in February 2020, Otato Sizwe writes that we need to stop undermining and undervaluing our indigenous languages, right? So let's digress, I mean, let's just go within context of what we're talking about, that, but let's digress into something else, you know, just to give context in terms of how, how, how important it is to preserve our, our indigenous languages and the kind of danger that they are facing. So 
Um, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, right, that um, re released a report saying that approximately 7,000 languages in the world face extinction. And in South Africa, 10 South African languages fall into the categories vulnerable or definitely endangered or severely endangered or critically endangered or just extinct. I say, they're just gone. Um, and a lot of these languages that are, 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 are critically endangered or extinct are, are languages of the Khoi. Um, and so when you look within these, and we, we would think, okay, it's languages of the Khoi, there are a few lang Khoi people fell anyway, so anyway, their languages would die. But uh, when you look you know, at Stetsu's um, census and, and the reports that they release, you'll find man, that the population in numbers in all provinces, like of human beings, but means like is, we are growing uh, and the number is growing. Every year the number is growing, the number of people in, 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 in each province is growing. But the one thing that's not growing and that's actually going in the opposite direction where it's decreasing is the number of people who speak indigenous languages in South Africa. And you find man, uh, the languages that are growing are e English, Afrikaans, um, while your Zulus, your Tosas, your, your, you know, all these languages that we think, oh, there's so many people speaking them, Naganda, Nazizuhufa, Ziafa. They are slowly decreasing, right? So must be like back to Iyan Nangman. In that case, I'm not in the comments. Sorry, you know, back from our digression. Um, so I comments that Iyan Nangman would have never been an issue if the subtitles were correct, you know. And the uproar that was it that was a direct result of the incorrect subtitling that led to people who do not know Zulu like me, uh, beyond some the the the, the corrupted. Sometimes bastard does this Zulu sister that I always do. Um, that led to people like us uh, thinking that Ayanda was saying something that she actually was not saying, you know. And the responsibility for that monumental error should be placed at the feet of Imalti Choi, who instead of apologizing for what they did, you know, in the subtitling and correction, would have, which would have helped, you know, in this social cohesion that we talk about when we look at these frameworks and these legal frameworks, at this healing, at this bringing together of people, at this protection of indigenous cu cultures and, and languages, you know, they then decided that they would not make any statements and they quietly and sneakily changed it without any kind of fanfare. And multi-choice's error um, is just but a small micro example, like I said, but uh, with SABC you find these very same issues. Now go Netflix where it's used to buy bands are the same issues and Netflix is not even South Africa in Nepal. But um, you find that this era is, is, is a micro example of, of a big South African um, state supported issue of the negligence of indigenous South African languages. So the uh, constitution and the regulatory frameworks that stem from the constitution uh, are there for the protection of indigenous languages in South Africa. But in practice, we see that the constant neglect and undermining of indigenous South African languages by the state is pervasive and it continues and, 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 and by the media. You know? So as e English continues to increase its domination in South Africa, and it, it is growing. Yanda in the English, I'm by the English, even right now I'm speaking English, and a lot of people that are black, um, or African also speak English. So it's growing. Um, and we continue to see the decline in indigenous South African languages. And just a combo, no matter in the loss of language, I know I have big bang occurrence. So it's not like we're going to we're speaking as Tosa, we're speaking as Swana, we're speaking as Sulu, we're speaking as Fed, we're speaking as Shona, we're speaking whatever languages we're speaking. Um, I'm speaking these languages and then we wake up in the morning and we're like, oh, everybody's suddenly speaking English. Oh my goodness, it happened overnight. No, it's not a big bang event. Um, it's something that happens slowly. So it's going to ask you by Yenzega, but Yenzega, and you know, and it's a slow and it's a persistent erosion until one day we wake up and nothing is left. Um, so we need to be, we need to be conscious of how, of, 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 and continue to fight for and, and speak up about, you know, the preservation of our indigenous languages. And in parting by Kerala video, I have to ask, but you know, in a country with 11 official languages, why are there no programs with subtitles in South Africa's indigenous languages? So when you watch a show that is spoken in Tswana, in Bedi, in Chivenda, or figure there are subtitles in English, but you will never find an English show with subtitles in Chivenda. And why is that? 
and why do we not fight for that? Because that, as I, as Ukuka has said, it helps with language ac ac acquisition. If we're able to read subtitles in our own languages, would that not assist us in learning these languages or reacquiring these languages or at least not losing these languages? Hmm. Okay.